championship weekend is upon us. It is one of multiple emotions, which kind of sums up the season in a nutshell. 34 champ card drivers will attempt to qualify for 33 slots, but there is an absence of a team that will not be present here this weekend. The Rockstar Phantom Motors has withdrawn both their Atlantics team and their Champ Cart team from this weekend. Jean-Claude Gabriel, the team owner of Phantom Motors, passed away on Tuesday at the age of 47. Jean-Claude Gabriel was battling cancer, had a prolonged multi-year battle with cancer before he passed away. He had sold his team to Glossy Autosport back in May. The actual transaction of that sale was not to begin until this offseason. With the passing of Gabriel, Andrew Draco, and Tyler Parker will have, have elected to not participate this weekend. David Wessel will be participating this weekend, but not with Rockstar Phantom Motors. Patrick Marcelli after what happened at Indianapolis and Denver, has decided to just retire immediately. We talked about how volatile the situation over Eastern Atlantic Motorsports had been. Uh, Marcelli has stepped down immediately, and as you can see at the bottom of your screen, David Wessel, the confirmation that he's replacing Marcelli here this weekend for Eastern Atlantic. So 34 drivers are set to do battle here. In Fontana, it's two duels for the Intel 500. This is duel one. What is it a, a, going to be a very crazy Saturday of racing? Four races on tap. It all starts here with the first duel. This determines the inside line for the 17 rows racing tomorrow for the Intel 500. Artyom Kozlov and Stephanie Porter Kelly. Start off the field of 17 in the inside lane. Katrina Okoa and Maria Chavez highlight row three. They're behind BK Glover and Isabel Espinoza. Gerard Perth and Siri Lundquist make up row four. Milford Moon and Esther Hoffson make up row five. Row six is Valerie Fang and Asada Quito. Row seven is Keisha Fox and Ronald Walker. Row eight, 15th and 16th on the grid, Diego Jaramillo and Anastasia Fonsonen. And then Astra Crane rounds out the grid. So it's going to be an interesting situation uh, as we get ready to, to see them. It looks like we're going to get the command in about two minutes. Uh, a lot of team play is going to be in this first duel. It's going to be an interesting dynamic because everyone in here is safe. They're guaranteed that they will be starting this race. The question is, wait, you're racing for pole, and that's about it. You have... A lot of pairs of teammates. You have uh, Kozlov and Glover, who are very familiar with each other from being teammates in the Atlantic Championship. You have Porter Kelly and Lachapel. You have Valerie Fang and Diego Jaramillo for Cat Devil Racing. You have both the Velocity Cars, Ochoa and Chavez in row three. Um... It's going to be an interesting situation as it unfolds. Uh, you have Perth and Moon for Elm Competition. Um, you have Espinoza and Asada Quito for Obsidian. Um, Lundquist and Fox for Cherokee GP. A lot of teamwork is going to be shown off here at Fontana. And at, at a race that has stereotypically been very pack racy. Uh, Firestone has bought a, a completely different tire spec. Um for champ card this weekend so we'll see how that goes uh no one's really practicing a large group so this is a everyone's first chance here on a pretty wonderful saturday afternoon to find out the capabilities of this fire sun tire it's almost time for the command so we will send it trackside drivers start your engines there's the command the fire engines, which means we are about to get going here. 
Chevrolet Corvette C7 base car will lead the field of 17. The first field of 17 tonight. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> Excuse me. It's Coslock for Kelly, Glover, and Espinosa top four. 75 laps per duel. Think about it, it's only 30% of the race distance tomorrow for the Intel 500. 250 laps tomorrow. Only 75 tonight. It's at least one pit stop. Everyone's expecting a pit stop about for at lap 50. We'll see how accurate that is. So, team dynamics in play. Brand new tire compound that we haven't seen all year long. And for a couple, this is the first time they've been up on damn it. Gonna be pretty spicy. Base car is in. And the first duel for championship weekend is underway. Kozlov off to a good start. Clever did not get such a hot start. But he's on the bottom, so he'll make it work. How much are these drivers going to push early on? Let's see off jockey for positions. Kozlov got to the bottom really quick. Porter Kelly was able to slot in. Still side by side is row, what well, was row two. It's Espinosa and Glover. Espinosa actually leapfrogs for third. Pretty tame rank and file so far. Again, everyone knows in this race that they are a guaranteed spot in the Intel 500 tomorrow. It's a matter of where you're starting. Chavez got ahead of Akoa. That's 56, a little further back. We're looking at Glover in fourth. It's Alpine, Chevrolet, all over the top six. We have to look back at the Ellen Competition duo. Two of only three Mercedes in this field. Ronald Walker's the other one. In there, but right in front of the Church GP duo of Lundquist and Fox. here in seventh, right behind the philosophy duo, the rookie duo. Single file, mostly Glover trying to find a way around Espinoza. Battle for third. As we look to the field, it's ninth and tenth for the Cherokee GP duo right now. 
Which, in a bubble, looks great. Ninth and tenth is not bad, but that's only rows nine and ten. Maybe okay, starting eight, seventeenth, and nineteenth tomorrow, and things stay on as they are right now, which is not great. But as we're seeing, it's a lot more single file this time around. Seeing how everyone comes to grips with the entire compound as. The largest group we saw yesterday in practice was only eight cars. And there was a, big, a bit of a question as to how much data was collected when that group test happened. A lot of people focus on, on longevity runs, on really just playing in, in Congo lines, essentially. So. This is the first chance we've actually seen them racing against each other at the same point as far as strategy is. How far have broken away from the Blossy Island Port Duo. Glover's still battling it in there with the Porto Kelly and Espinosa. Porto Kelly, the fastest in both practice sessions yesterday. Out, uh, really out timing the Impulse Trio, Lacasse, Kozlov, and Glover. Although Kozlov qualified first in qualifying. So how the duels work as we approach lap 10. Duel 1 determines the inside lanes for rows 1 through 17. If you win this race, you start tomorrow from pole position. The 17 rows, 17 cars. And if one's guaranteed to start in and Duel 1. Duel 2, later tonight, is where the question mark comes in. One person will be going home. The question is who will be going home? Nice little look at pit lane here. As all 17 cars fly through. According to the camera angle there, as Port Kelly takes another chance trying to go after Artyom Kozlov. Port Kelly, her last weekend as a champ car driver. Duel 2 tonight, as I said before. Uh, one person will be going home. There's only 16 lanes. There's only 16 rows on the outside. Only allowing 33 to start. There's 34 enter for this race. Someone tonight will be going home and will not be competing in the rest of the weekend. It's going to be a little more intense tonight. Everyone here just racing for full position at this point, really. The Velocity Autosport duo of Chavez and Ochoa back up with the lead four. So it's a group of six. Keisha Fox has moved up to seven. So Cherokee GP now sandwiching the Ellen Competition duo in this race. Glover's gotten past Porter Kelly, so it's an impulse 1-2 for Duel 1 so far. Still early time here in Fontana. A crazy Saturday of racing. Pretty cloudy, pretty hazy today. There's no chance of weather affecting anything happening this afternoon or tomorrow. Top three separating themselves from the rest of the field. Kozlov has led most of this race pretty easily. Glover's going to try to change that across the line. Don't believe that'll be the case. Indeed it is not. Glover's going to wait a lap to try to lead a lap here. Porta Kelly's going to help get into the middle of it. Porta Kelly, this is her last weekend as a champ car driver, as I mentioned before. Before she retires and focuses on being a team owner for Sparkle Motorsports. She's doing a phenomenal job. Showing a lot of pace so far this weekend.
Top six still all together. And it's a second between Ochoa and the 48 in Keisha Fox and then 62 for Cherokee GP. Glover now leads over Kozlov, Porter Kelly, Espinoza, Chavez, and Ocho. Kozlov going for the lead right back. Teammates battling for what could be full position. These two again, very familiar with each other. They'll be racing against each other all day long as they also are contending in the finale for the Nissan Atlantic Championship today. So here, this is the first of three times these two will be going head-to-head -head tonight. Always entertaining to see. Ochoa hanging back a little bit off of Chavez's tail. Glover still leads over Kozlov, Porticelli, Espinosa in fourth position. Cherokee GP now sitting seventh and eighth. Esther Hoffman's put herself into the top ten. Gallery Fang in eleventh. Small was Motor Moon. She dropped two spots. Sadakito has dropped. Actually, I think Kido's actually gained spots. We'll see here. Kido started in the 12th position. I believe he has dropped spots. He's dropped one spot. New look for Diego Jaramillo. His, fat, his final outing as the champ car driver before he moves over to race in Formula Zero. He's sitting right in front of Anastasia Bonsona. And then... Astra Crane rounding out the back of the field. No, Ron, uh, Ronald Walker's last so far. Crane's the last one in the pack, but Ronald Walker is the one off pace out of the draft. Looking at the battle for ninth between Perth and Hobson. On to trying to creep themselves into the top ten. Put themselves in the top half of the field for tomorrow. Hobson side by side with Valerie Fang. Two Hondas and two Mercedes at the very cusp of the top ten. Mio behind Asada Quito, who's peeking in that second McDonald's Chevrolet for Obsidian. This is the biggest cluster of racing going on right now. A lot of single file action. You also have to think about the heat of the day. How different is the racing going to be tonight for Duel 2? Duel 2 will be more indicative of what the cars will be like for the race tomorrow. But right now it seems like the cars or the tires are not very heat friendly. Hassan again going after Valerie Fang. Fang looking at the outside. Try to get a run on Gerard Perth at 34. Still 2x2, two two, catch up racing Eastern Atlantic and Ellen competition in this fight. Top 5, so within a second, Katrina Okoa has dropped back 
almost the range of the Cherokee GP duo of Fox and Lonequist. Looking at from the spectator stand, if you look at Maria Chavez there. Really large facility here at Fontana, just outside the LA metropolitan area. Glover still leads as we complete the first third of this duel. See where the the really the top performers are just currently at so far. The ones that performed the best. start off the weekend if Glover can win the first duel and start on a pole tomorrow. That would be a really big deal for him. Finished second at the Indy 500 in May. Lost another podium opportunity at Pocono. Uh, had a tire uh, nut strip on them. Of course they couldn't really remove it so they had to retire the car. It was overall a bad weekend for Impulse at Pocono. But now here we are. They've looked really strong all weekend long. They've looked really united between Kozlov, Lacasse, and Glover. And right now it shows. They're 1 2. Really pacing this duel. See they have our speed there to 11.675 for Glover. A little bit slower than last year, if we're looking at last year's race time. Kind of shows that this tire is a little bit harder. Or at least a little bit less grippy. Forcing drivers to be a bit more unique with their moves. Last year we saw drivers hugging that white line whenever they wanted to make a move, whenever they're trying to get to the front. They're leaving a little bit of space now. They're widening their arcs in and out of the corner. And that means a lot with how you unload the car. How, how, how quickly do you have to unload the steering wheel? When you come out of the corners, the, the more you're on the bottom, the more you're hugging the bottom, the more you're unloading, the more that you're hurting the tires. Which sometimes causes cars to drift up and cause accidents. Um, they've reduced some of the grip in the tire for Fontana, which obviously is making it harder to be side by side the entire time. But it's also the key of the day here. So it's, it's hard to tell how much of that is genuinely on the tire and how much of that's on the heat. Kozlov closing the gap a little bit. Thinking about making a move now that they're a little bit ahead of Fort Kelly. Clever on the radio, everything is smooth. What's gonna fail first? Near the car. Speaking some frustrations there. Still very fresh in Clever's mind. He's got a win in the Atlantic Championship, the Toronto. Uh, I believe that's the Toronto Sprint Race, where Clever won. 
a few podiums as well between both Kozlov and Glover in the Atlantics. It's been a successful season for the team. It's still a lot of... I guess... Hesitancy on Glover's part. Glover did not have a good season in 2020 compared to what Ishibashi had seen and compared to what LeCast did on, as a rookie. As we met, so the team principal for Team Impulse has said, we see what Glover brings to the table. There's no reason not to have him back. Though the pressure's on. The pressure's on next year. That team is going to have drivers in six different series. Between Champ Car, Indy Car, the Atlantic Championship, GP1, GP2, and GP3 over in Japan. The Impulse wants to be the the gold standard in open wheel racing. Today, this year was a great step in that stride. Second in the team championship. And with everything that's transpired this week and Rockstar Family Motors not participating this weekend, Hazel LaCasse will be crowned 2021 IndyCar World Champion tomorrow. Kozlov made a look at the inside, trying to take the lead back. Kozlov led the early part of this race, but Glover has been really hard about holding onto that race, holding onto dual race one, or trying to get pole position tomorrow. After this season ends tomorrow, Namra and Horizon Corporation set to ratify the 2022 calendars for Champ Car, IndyCar, and the Atlantic Championship. Next year set to be a really big year. The Indy 500 is set to be a part of a five race weekend on the second Sunday in May. 109th Indy 500 will be preceded by the Atlantic Championship on Friday. Then you'll have the IndyCar race and the Chichi Planet Fantasy Series racing the day before. And then you have the 109th Indy 500 itself on Sunday. Gonna be a big weekend in early May. And that's the weekend of May 8th, 2022. Four-car race at the top of the field. Team Impulse won two. Steffi Porticelli for Strecker Motorsports in third. And Isabel Espinoza for Obsidian Racing Team in fourth. It's still Velocity fourth and fifth. Maria Chavez in fifth. Katrina Okoa in sixth. Right ahead of the Cherokee GP duo of Keisha Fox and Siri Lundquist. And then a bit of a pack race going on as tire wear begins to come front and center. 
It's Perth Hobson Fang Moon. Hito, Von Sarnen, Armio, and Crane all together. And Ron Walker set to potentially go a lap down in this race. Again, this is dual race one. This determines the inside lane for the Intel 500 tomorrow. The race winner of dual one will be the pole sitter for the Intel 500. Part one of a very busy Saturday of racing. Pat crowd, packed weekend of racing here at Fontana. Glover still leads. He's led the most laps so far in this dual race. But his main challengers, Kozlov, Porcelli, and Espinosa, have been constantly in pursuit. Kozlov started this race from the front of the field, led the first 14 laps. Pretty straight forward. Glover took that lead away with help from Porter Kelly. And has not looked back. And we know that we are approaching the pit window. The question is, when are they coming in? Kozlov's coming in now, so is Espinoza. So they blink five laps early. They've been at the end of lap 44. A lot of cars come in. We'll see how it works. Portagelli and Glover on their own at the front of the field. They stay out another lap. So Glover leads more. See if they come in this time, it looks like it. Here the engine's revving down. Yep, race leader's in now. So Glover pits. Espinoza and Kozlov out next to each other. We'll see if they can take the race lead away from Glover and Porter Kelly. Looks like they might pass Porter Kelly here. We're calling in that yellow Sunoco car. See if they can get past Glover. This could be a big deal. Glover's not up to speed yet. Kozlov is. But Glover's making Kozlov go to the outside. Kozlov won't be denied to the bottom for the Russian rocket. Porter Kelly, a bit slower of a pit stop. That will cost her if she'll be down the fourth. <laughs> Still side by side, the Team Impulse teammates. Going at it. Espinosa helped Kozlov stay in the fight. Espinosa making her presence felt in this top three conversation here in Duel 1.
Kozlov takes the lead back. Very opportune time. A bit two laps earlier. The question now is, will Kozlov be able to hold on to it for the next 26 laps? So this is the top three for the Kelly in fourth. We might find our own island. Keisha Fox has leapfrog Katrina Okoa, who has dropped down to eighth behind Siri Lundquist as well. Ochoa had a really bad pit stop. That has put her right at the thick of it. At the mid-pack line. That's Valerie Fay in the NCT data car, number 17. Diego Armia has moved up some spots, battling with Perth for 10th. The three full-time Ked Double Racing cars running unique schemes this weekend will be the final weekend at the Super Team for Ked Double Racing. Cameron Jackson obviously going on to become a co-owner of Dragon Motorsports. Diego Armia moving over to race for Honda in Formula Zero. It'll lead just Dini Kenosha and Valerie Fang as full-time drivers for Ken Racing next year. Big changes for that team. Armia still battling, trying to get 10th away from Armia. Von Sarnen has lost touch with the draft. There's Von Sarnen. And there is Ron Walker. Asher Crane throws 17th in this race at number 80 for Rod Spree's racing. She now sits in the 14th spot ahead of Esther Hobson. Asana Quito in 13th. 12th is where you'll find Miller Moon. And 11th for Diego Jaramillo. This is the battle up at the front of the field. Kozlov, Glover, and Espinoza. Espinoza, it's a one-on-two situation here. Espinoza making the outside look really formidable here. Take second away at the line. Is, is Espinoza needs the outside lane to take second away? It's a hard task. I think it's showing that uh, Kozlov's pretty keen on having Espinoza as a buffer. A little bit of a uh, upsmanship here. As Espinoza tries to again weasel her 88 McDonald Chevrolet into the conversation. Looks like Glover's going to defend second here. He's going to try to anyway. They're still side by side. This is the third lap in a row that we've seen them side by side. That's Spinoza and Glover. Very familiar with each other. Espinoza debuted in the Champ Car World Series back in 2018. Glover's been a mainstay since 2011. Talking about Glover's career, he started out in Champ Car with Highlight Racing. Do we now will race against on a regular basis in Champ Car again next year? Went out in 2015, started his own team, Starry and Motorsports. Ran that team until 2018. Before moving uh to Team Impulse in 2020 with Sakura Shibashi and 
a litany of other drivers that have driven for the team since they when started going through like a carousel in 2017. Then about the drivers that have driven for Team Impulse. Started out with Asumi Matsuo and Valentina Figueredo. That was from 2008 until largely 2014. That's when Matsuo retired and became a team principal for the for the operation. Matsuo now receives the team in six different series and counting. But after Figueredo and Matsuo left the team for various reasons, the end of a carousel. Ishibashi's been a mainstay since 2017. Jerome Torres was part of the team. Thomas Rogers has been out of the team more than once. William Manor's been a part of the team. You had Tyler Parker from 2018 to 2020. DK Glover's been a part of the team since 2020. Hayes McCath as well. And now the team is in both ladder systems in the United States and Japan. A little bit of sportsmanship between the 12 and the 3 right now. They're both, they both know each other really well. They raced with each other all year in the Atlantic Championship. A bit of a tip of the cap from the radio from Glover to Kozlov. Glover's going to be a thorn in Kozlov's side the rest of this race. As they get round the 97 of Ronald Walker to put him a lap down firmly. Espinosa's going to try to follow suit. Walker just does not have it. But he's holding out that Spinoza. That's kind of what Team Impulse wanted. And that'll separate Espinosa from Team Impulse. That's a job done. That a side force action really affecting the 88 of Espinosa. Seems to be on and off whether or not it's actually effective or not. It depends on how the car is set up. If you have a very unstable car, a very trimmed out car, it's gonna be a big deal. If you have a bit of downforce, if you're if you have a, a bit of uh stability in that car, it seems like it's pretty decent. Espinosa has trimmed out a lot to try to keep up with Team Impulse Duo, which have an absolutely superb Super Speedway setup this year. We saw it in the, we saw it at Pocono before they essentially imploded with mechanical failures. We've seen it at Chicagoland. They have a Super Speedway setup to die for. And... You have to do a lot to keep up with them. Coming to 10 to go. Glover knows that it's only him and Kogbop right now. He's got to get around. Rookie sensation that scored her their first podium uh, last week at Denver. Crazy weekend last weekend at Denver. If you've missed any of the races to the 2021 Champ Car World Series season, you can always access it through CRC Now, the on-demand platform service for CRC Network. Go back and catch all of the races of the 2021 Champ Car World Series season or the 2021 Atlantic Championship season. Available now on your smartphone device as Glover goes for the race lead. Nine to go here in duel number one. The first of four raises th this evening. The first of three that Glover's going to have a chance to win.
Glover has cleared Kozlov. Can Kozlov get an answer back? Seems like Glover's car can handle the the, worn, the older tires better than Kozlov. Kozlov's still kind of learning things out here. So Glover back to the front. Again, the first of four races today. And he's going to a championship feature race after, after this. So the two cars center your screen. They'll have to jump out of these cars and get into their Atlantic championship machines. And do it all over again for 75 more laps. A lot of miles for both Glover and Kozlov. But it's a 1-2 result right now for Team Impulse in Duel 1. The qualifying duels for the Intel 500 tomorrow night here at Autoco Speedway in Fontana, California. Six to go. That's Glover, Kozlov, Espinosa, Porter Kelly, Keisha Fox in fifth. Then it is... Maria Chavez in 6th. That's the battle for 5th and 6th right there. Lundquist been caught up by Ochoa and company. Parmil up to the top 10. And battling with Ochoa trying to get into 8th place. First and 10th, 11th is Fang. 12th is Moon, Keto, Brain, Hofton, Von Sonnen, and then Ronald Walker lap down now. Three laps to go. Looks like this is going to be how it's going to finish here. Glover sitting in front of Kozlov. Kozlov just can't handle the dirty tires or the old tires as well. As Glover has been able to this afternoon. We saw it in the first stint before the pit stop. Glover just had a lot of control over it. Kozlov pit a couple laps earlier and got that advantage. But lost their only help. Espinosa got trapped behind the lap car of Ronald Walker and that just kind of made it a one-on-one -on -one situation and Glover just kind of bided his time and got around as start the final lap here for duel one almost like clockwork Glover's gonna have his first pull position In well over a year. His first Super Speedway pole position since 2015 in Indianapolis. DK Glover wins Duel 1 and he will start on Boulevard.
Kozlov in second. Third is Isabel Spinoza. Fourth is Porter Kelly. Top five for Keisha Fox, and it's Maria Chavez. Katrina Ochoa lost eighth place. Aramio almost took seventh from Siri Lundquist, but that's not the case. Lundquist seventh, Aramio eighth, and ninth is Ochoa. Tenth is Gerard Perth. Eleventh, Valerie Fang. Twelfth, Mildred Newman. Thirteenth, for Astrid Crane. Fourteenth, Esther Hoffman. Fifteenth, Asada Kito. Sixteenth, for Anastasia Sponsonin. And the last car running, one lap down, is Ronald Walker. So that is Duel 1 in the books. As everyone comes in. 75 laps, Duel 1. First of four races are out of the way for a crazy Saturday of racing. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a slight break and then send it to the CRC Studios in New York. To cover what we've seen from Duel 1 and get ready for the feature race. For the Nissan Atlantic Championship. Again, a lot of high speed action coming still today. Don't go anywhere. We'll send you to New York after a word from our sponsors. <laughs> 